Uh, thank you. So, um, in, in a few words, uh, what we uh, did in the study is to recruit um, a population of patients presenting with ST elevation uh, myocardial infarction uh, acutely. Um, it's uh, obviously a low risk population because we uh, wanted to uh, study uh, uh, patients without heart failure, without uh, renal insufficiency, and um, uh, we excluded patients also with uh, known left ventricular dysfunction. Uh, these uh, patients uh, were um, uh, quite well treated because we had uh, more than 90% of patients reperfused uh, acutely, mostly by uh, primary PCI. Uh, um, and uh, all the good works were given to these patients. As you know, we, uh, we had 98% of patients on statins, for example. Uh, we, we had 90% um, uh, or 88% of patients on beta blockers. Uh, and uh, we had 98% of patients on aspirin and P2Y12 antagonists. So uh, low risk population, extremely well treated and randomized to receive uh, a mineral or co corticoid receptor antagonist, which is a plerenon, versus placebo in a double blind uh, fashion. Uh, we have almost a year of follow up in these patients. Uh, the primary endpoint of the study is a composite endpoint of death, um, heart failure, um, uh, high BNP, uh, low ej ejection fraction. Uh, in these uh, in these patients, and uh, uh, we had a reduction which was highly significant, uh, mostly driven by uh, subclinical heart failure, as measured by the high BNP levels. Um, uh, we had very low event rates. We were very surprised by uh, uh, the mortality rates, 0.4 percent at one year. This is extremely low. Uh, we had a, a two percent uh, event rate for uh, heart failure. So clearly. Uh, uh, we we uh, have difficulties in evaluating uh, clinical outcomes, but there was a secondary endpoint, which was uh, uh, death, heart failure, and uh, uh, ventricular arrhythmias, and this, uh, there was a 40% reduction of this endpoint with a p-value of 0 0.09. So we see trends on clinical endpoints, but the primary endpoint was driven by these uh, IBNP levels uh, measured in the patient one month or later after randomization. Thank you. If you remain at the podium, I want to introduce the chairman of ACC 13, uh, Dr. Miguel Quinones, who will discuss the paper and uh, will take questions. Uh, thank you, John. Um, I first want to uh, congratulate um, uh, Dr. Montalesco for this because this is really doing a trial that is very hard to do because it's based on very solid hypotheses, but using medications that are no longer attractive from a commercial point of view because they're very well established, uh, either either currently generic or soon to be generic. So it's, it's really very hard to do, very hard to get funding, and and really I commend them for sticking with it and, and, and testing this hypothesis. Um, I think the hypothesis has a lot of solid uh, uh, validation in terms of being based on solid uh, concepts. Um, and the trend that is being shown in a, in a group of patients that was very well treated. So that's the other thing we have to, to see is that currently the treatment of acute MI works. I mean, we can see very low uh, bad events happening to people because of the standard medications and the standard treatment we're delivering. So that's the first very good news. But also it's hard for an investigator because it's harder than when you have such good results to further show benefit. So as you can see, this striking benefit was in markers of subclinical heart failure or subclinical more damage to the heart, i.e. an ejection fraction in the 40% less or very high BNP. And of course, the thought here is that if these people then are going to, uh, were to be followed for three, four, five years, we would then see the gain of this benefit manifested by a lower clinical incidence of heart failure in the years to come, as is suggested by many other registries and studies that have suggested that patients with those markers do have a higher expression of heart failure down the road. Um, so one of the big issues here would be lovely to be able to take this group of patients and follow them over three to five years. Um, one of the nice things about uh, the, the study is that the drug was used for a short term. So this is not the same thing as when we, when we use a, a, a plerenone on a long-term basis as a third-line drug for a heart failure group of patients who also have potential kidney problems and many other issues. We 
are adding a therapy that has benefit but has potentially more risk, more, more problems, particularly when you combine it with other agents like ACE inhibitors. Here, this was a very short-term use, which again was shown to be very safe. So I, I, this is a really beautiful study, great hypothesis generation, potential to really be a game changer, a game changer if we could demonstrate three to five years later that there's been a significant reduction in clinical outcomes that eventually make patients sicker and generate more, more expense for our healthcare system. Question is going to be how do we get that long-term data because that is why it's so crucial to get. Happy to take questions uh, from the audience.